Today's episode is brought to you by West End, South Australia's most iconic beer. Now, it's a clean, fresh draft beer. There's nothing more local, nothing more South Australian than cracking a red tin. Probably never told this to anybody, but as a kid growing up, I was captain or vice captain, whatever it was. Yep. When I came off the ground, if we'd lost, I would ball. Cry my right. eyes out because we lost. I was that so competitive. Right. And I used to hide in the corner. And Mum used to, you know, hug me and yeah. you know, little Johnny, yeah. you know, and this type of thing. And tears yeah. would come. I said, you know, John's okay. So what's next week? And what, so, and what age was this, you reckon? Oh, uh, probably eight, nine, yeah, ten, yeah. Yep. that type of rages. Yep. But it hurt losing oh, that much. It hurt losing so much because I hate losing. Ah, the rat Johnny Platten, one of the greatest rovers in the history of Australian footy. Born and bred in Elizabeth in Adelaide's tough north. All he wanted to do was play for Central District like his idols. And boy, did he do that. He won the 1984 McGarry medal and then he headed off to the big league with Hawthorne and became an absolute footy icon. He's a Brownlow medalist, won a truckload of premierships. His CV has it all. And after footy, well, the Rat has become a successful businessman, but he's also had to battle the effects of a heap of concussions from his courageous playing days. Johnny Platten is one of football's great characters. I cannot wait for you to hear this chat. Now, this episode does talk about mental health, so if you have any concerns, please contact Lifeline on 13 11 14. Rightio, let's go. Welcome along to The Soda Room, a place where we get to know the real stories behind some of the biggest names in the game. It was like we had won the grand final. I just got some new boots. It was something yeah. special for me. Did you understand the significance of that moment? Oh, yeah. Nothing compared. That's what I thought I had to do as a leader. You've got the same undies on. <laughs> I've got exactly the same ones on. Johnny Platten the Rat, welcome along. Great to have you here. Thank you, Sardis. and looking forward to this. Mate, I'm really excited, Rat, because I've got to say, when I was a young bloke growing up in Melbourne, you were one of my all-time favourites. Thank you, Sardis. Yeah. I, I, I love... pay you now or pay you later? Nah, <laughs> later. But I, I love watching the Hawks in the 80s because you had yeah. just such a ridiculously powerful team. We did. Yeah. We had an awesome side. You know, I'm not trying to yeah. pump our own ties up, but uh, you look back now, it was uh, uh, an awesome side, you know, like... Mm. Uh, Dippers, the Burtons, the Dunstalls, Ayres, Tucks, Langfords, all these sort of blokes. They just roll off the top of your tongue, and and uh, we and then the other. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want to individual do it, but we also had some really tough players like Anthony Condon, mm. uh, Dean Anderson, Pritchard, mm. Andy Collins, Gary Ayres. You know all these. They were just a superstar team. Unbelievable. No wonder you won so many flags, and we will get into that. Mm. Now, Red, I've got to say, we just obviously had the grand final. Yep. You would have been over there yep. for the Brownlow. Geez, that's nice. One of the perks, isn't it? You get to go to every McGarry medal and every Brownlow medal for the rest of your life. It's uh, something special and something that uh, we really enjoy. So we go over for the Brownlow, and we stay there for the week. So it's it's great. Uh, it's a bit of fun. Catch up with some old teammates as well. So, uh, But just to get them amongst the uh, the grand final week, it is, mm. it is great. I've got to ask, though, because I went over there and had a look and I remember the motorcade as a youngster and because now Friday's that public holiday in yes. Melbourne. When we were younger, we used to oh. wag school, get the train <laughs> in there because everyone in their lunchtime would come out yeah. and watch you guys as you'd go up there. Now they stuck them out in the water because yeah. of COVID. It just isn't the same with the it's, public holiday. It's not the same, yeah. It's, it's, you know, like going back in my day, I was lucky enough to have five of them and we would come down the middle of Burke, mm. or Burke Street or, or, or uh, Swanson Street, it might have yeah. been. Uh, but there was people everywhere hanging outside the the windows and balconies and mm. uh, they all came out of the shops and uh, you know over a hundred thousand people there and it was just it was just a big build up for the week and a great lead up into the game on 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 for Saturday. Yeah, I know I, the public holiday. You better off having the public holiday on the Monday to recover, isn't it? Oh, after I think you've so. had a big yeah. weekend because that yeah that Friday was just just brilliant but it's changed I mean, it's been three or four years now they've yeah. done it isn't it it's just changed the whole feel it has well just melbourne itself you know like mm. you know going back in our days i said there was thousands and thousands of people coming into the city to see the motor cave and it spilled out to the shops and you know and the office people were, were you know flags out balloons were hanging off there and yelling and screaming and uh, yeah it was great it was something special now Red, i've got a little bone to pick with you i need to check something because mm-hmm. I know for many, many years, the story has always gone that you're called the rat. Yes. 
because you're in Ireland playing with Stephen Kernahan, rooming with him. Yes. And what's your story? You came out of the shower. I came out of the shower. Yep. And we we're ready to go to training, but Sticks wasn't up out of bed yet. Mm. So I've just got out of the shower, ringing, wet, and hair was everywhere. And uh, so I had to go and wake up Kerners. I said, Kerners, mate, you've got to wake up. We, we have to go to the uh, footy training before Toddy finds us. So uh, he's looked up at me and he and he had this strange look on his face. And he said, you look like a drowned rat. So that's my story. So said, if anybody tells you anything different, <laughs> th- that's the story. Well, look, I've believed that for many, many years. Thank you. And I've asked, you know, a lot of your central boys mm. and everyone laughs when I've said, this is the story, isn't it? And they just go, you're kidding, aren't you? Yeah. I know it's boring, but that's how it was. Right. Yeah. I, I, look, I don't know what the real story is, but I've got an idea that it'll never see the light of day, will it? Well, probably not. But uh, <laughs> if you watch uh, This Is Your Life in 1997, Stephen mm. Kernahan says that. So that's my story. I'm going to stick with it. You, you were the guest on This Is Your Life. Yeah, 1997, yes. What a spin out. Yeah, it was great, yes. Uh, uh, unbelievable. They They got me... At Triple M sh- um, show, I think Adelaide were playing Western Bulldogs at uh, MCG in the prelim final, yep, and they got me in the box in the um, in the Triple M box. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so and they just come in and say, right, that's it. Yeah, that's and is it. it like on the TV show where they come and get you and surprise yep. you, then they take you? Yep, that's it. Yeah, there, there, there was cameras in the box. And I just thought it was just a part of the show, and and then Eddie McGuire so sort of says. Uh, you know, it goes on about footy and the Crows and Western Bulldogs and, you know, it's going to be a great day and, Rat, how are you feeling? Yeah, all good. And then uh, next minute, uh, by the way, we've got a special announcement. So just go along with it and say, okay. And, says, uh, and then all of a sudden, Mike Munro walks in and says, uh, John Platt, this is your life. <laughs> so it was amazing. Yeah, it was that great. And they took me the... away. I had to go yeah. to a, in, uh, um, into a, uh, another corporate box by myself. I watched the game all by myself. And then uh, my wife at the time there, she – got my clothes and took it down to Channel 9 and then we did the show on that night. And that was, and everyone came out. So you're everyone sitting there out. on the couch just yeah. waiting to hear this voice. Yeah. John, do you remember this voice? Yes, yes. It's very scary. <laughs> you, when when Stix Kernahan talked, you would have worked his voice out pretty Oh, it was then. quite easy, yes. And then when Stix came out, he sort of told that story. So um, mm. I'm sticking by that story. Right. Who was the biggest surprise they rolled out for you? Oh, God, they had uh, – oh, God, hopefully I'm, I'm going to get this right um, – I think Peter Brock came on, Jeff Kennett came on, Jimmy Barnes came on, uh, and then Dermot and uh, Jason Dunstall came on the show. Uh, Andy Bowley, uh, mate of mine from Port Broughton, came mm. in. He was a, sort of the, the special guest who I haven't seen for 20-odd years because I went to Melbourne. He was still at Port Broughton. Um, oh, no, just – and my family. My mum was there and the kids were only little, so, uh, yeah, it's great. It was a It was a – a fantastic night. You just said about Stephen Kernahan before, and it was in Ireland that game. Now that Irish experience must have been amazing. We had uh, six blokes from Adelaide. There was yep. uh, myself, Kernahan, Bradley, Motley, McIntosh, and Michael Wash. Right. In '84, we toured over to Jeez, what to, a, to what a for about three or four weeks. Yeah, it was amazing. And then we, then there was about uh, there was six of us from from yep. South Australia, fifteen or so from from Melbourne, yeah. and there was about seven or eight from Perth. Right. So. Played hard on and off the field? Played hard on and off the field, and um, we had uh, John Todd as our coach. Yeah. And the best thing about the trip was Teddy Whitten. He was our, oh, he right. was a, the assistant coach or- Chief motivator. Uh, chief motivator, yeah. <laughs> uh, social motivator. Yes. So we had everything. So it was great, great learning t- curve for me. You know, like, as as I said, I was, just, I was only a kid at 21 and same yeah. as Kerners and Brattles and those types of boys. It was pretty much our, our first trip outside yeah. of Australia and to be a part of that side was, was yeah. amazing. Yeah. Did you guys beat up on the Irish? We did, yes. Um, we, we, what had happened was that um, we, we, we went over, you know, like a group of tough Aussie boys yeah. and, you know, play the game and, you know, this is you know, easy to do, play yeah. and, you know, it's easy to mark a ball and handball yep. and kick a round ball. Yeah, you know, it was, everything was easy for us, right. you know. So what, we went over there and we had three trial games yep. against Irish counties. Oh, yeah. And yeah. we got smashed. Oh, three really? games. Yeah. It was out of control. Well, was it the tackling? How hybrid were the rules at that point? Were they what we sort of seen the last few years or were they more? Well, it was a bit hybrid. Yeah. You, you couldn't sort of tackle and throw them in the ground and that yeah. sort of thing. You got to try and knock the ball out, out of the hands. Oh, yeah. So uh, that gave us a, a real disadvantage because, as I'm saying, you know, 22 blokes who were tough and rough and ready to yeah. play Irish game, the, the, the gully game, it was, it was a bit hard for us not to tackle. Yeah. 
So in these trial games when we played against all these different counties over in over in Ireland, we, we got smashed by 50 points and 60 points and that. Yep. So our first game, we played at Croke Park in front of mm-hmm. 75,000 people there. Jeez. And Teddy sort of got us together. He said, yeah. boys, he said, well, no, it's been tough. We've lost our last three games. What we need to do is play some really hard, tough footy. Yep. So let's go back to Aussie Rules game and let's win this first test. So there we go, out we go, and we the boys just built them. It was, it was brutal, it, brutal. Yeah, it was. Um, yeah, it was not sort of build them at in a sense that we turned around and whack blokes, but yeah. we, we tackled them hard. We put them to the ground, so we put them off their game, yep. and then we finished up winning the first test. Yeah. So after that test, the Irish guys, the, the committee, sort of said, "Look, that's not the right." part of the rules, yep. um, you know, you can't tackle and do right. this and do that. So we had to go back and play the hybrid rules, yep. no tackling, so you can only push and try and knock the ball yep. in the hands. That was the second test. We played that. We got built by 60 points. Right. And Teddy said, no, nah, we're not doing this. We're going to have we play the first <laughs> yeah, test. Yeah, yeah. So we built them. We won the series 3-2. 2-1. 2-1, right. uh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Was that when McIntosh was goalkeeper? Yeah. And he, he yeah, was. He chased blokes. And he would have been young. Oh, yeah. As I said, we're only yeah, 20, yeah. 21. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I, he was the, the goalkeeper and someone builded Macca. So yeah. Macca didn't like it. And back in those days then, well, it probably is, is now, is that the goalkeeper doesn't move out of the yep. the, the front square. Yep. Macca kept on moving out of the square. Right. He was chasing bo- blokes. He wanted to build yeah, blokes. And yeah. uh, it became a bit of a, bit of a so funny he's, game. He may have just about converted and changed the whole game of yeah. a goalkeeper. Seeing, imagine Iris watching that, watching him come out, going, "Hang oh. on, we can attack." That's right, yeah. Because the only way that you can score a, a six pointer is, yes. is under the bar in the net. In the net. So, yep. And that's why the, the keeper had, had to stay there. Yeah, you know, right. they, they didn't mind going over the top because yep. that was only three points. Yes. And then a one point. Yeah. So, um, so Macca was out of control. He was. I can remember watching those highlights as a kid. Yeah. You know, at school, I remember going to school and going to footy training as kids talking about that because mm. I was sort of, you know, 13 at that time and, and we remember that and we're going, who's this bloke from South Australia, yeah. McIntosh? Yeah, he was just him. destroying him, wasn't the, he? The Victorian blokes loved him and uh, <laughs> Toddy loved him and, yeah. and Teddy Whitten loved him. And, yeah. uh, no, he's a great man, McIntosh. Uh, he was great. Um, right, you've talked a fair bit about your concussion mm-hmm. and I think it was sort of six or seven years ago when it first came out, you did a chat with Mark Robinson with the paper. Yeah. How are things now, sort of that much time onwards now? Oh look, it's uh, it's it's been going okay. It's it's um, I I have a test every year just to make sure that everything's all all going okay. It, it's hard to get results because you, you don't really know uh, the results and uh, yeah uh, until un, until you pass. Yeah, that's that's the hardest part at at at, at this stage with the CTE. Yeah, 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 with the CTE. So I had a test in February of this year. I had a, it's called a Meg test, mm. and it's it's uh, it's a test where you. You you go in a room and you you see a little light and you got to have your eyes open for ten minutes and then you got to close your eyes for ten minutes and open up your eyes again with, with this little light and you got to concentrate on this light for for thirty minutes and then we had to get out and get an MRI and then those sorts of tests will go over to the the UK because this mm-hmm. is where the the Meg test is and a week later it came back and the the, the results came back and um, um, Peter Jess rang me and said look this is your results. It's showing that you have forty three percent damage of concussion in your brain. So, which was very daunting at the time. And uh, he said, "Look, you know." I said, "Wow." I said, "So, what do I do now?" He said, "Look, everything's okay. Like, you're not going to die. You just got to keep on getting tested, so that we know in five years' time, ten years' time that um, that you've gone through this test and it, it's getting better or it's getting worse. So, uh, it's only early days with the whole mm. situation. Five or six years. A lot of guys are doing testing. So hopefully it works out that I can, you know, in five years' time or 10 or 15, 20 years' time mm. that, that I've done all the right things now and not done it 20 years' time when it mm. might have been too late. So I'm doing it now, getting all the tests done, getting the awareness out. The AFL are doing a good job now because uh, it's it's 12 days before you play a game. Yep. Uh, it could be more, but it really depends mm. on the on the on the, the, the person as well when he plays the game. If he still gets headaches during the week, mm. don't play. If you yep. feel that you're okay, play after 12 days. When you played, obviously things are a lot more brutal. You've got a bit of an idea of how many concussions you've probably had, haven't you? You'd worked well, that out? Yeah, yeah, I sort of worked it out in a sense of uh, 
I played 18 senior leagues, league league football, uh, six here in, in Adelaide and uh, 12 in, in Melbourne. So mm. uh, on the average, I would probably get two a year. You know, it, it could be more, it, it could be less, but I just try to average it out and that's probably about 36 times. So, look, uh, it's – could be more or less on yeah, yeah but it's that's a lot. an average yeah it's a lot it's a yeah, lot yeah and to know what I know now mm. oh, it's you know maybe I might have been a bit more conscious about you know playing the week that mm. the following week or you know because I still had headaches when I was playing mm. but you can't you can't know that back I, then, you, you know what I mean no, like no. You, you can't do anything about what obviously happened back then tell us about like day to day life how does how do things affect you. Well, just sort of over you know the last probably ten years, it's more about um, you know people look at me <laughs> as a happy, lucky tour bloke, and which I am. You know, I, I try to be like that, and yep. but certainly over the last whatever ten years or so, I get frustrated very quickly now. I I have my moods. I try not to show it in front of friends and family. You know, I have trouble sleeping at times, and I and the more. More thing which I'm more worried about is is headaches, getting really bad headaches. So, um, and I would get those oh, maybe once or twice a week, and and with that there, I just wow. take a couple of Nurofen or or Panadol, whatever, just to try and settle it, and so that I'm I'm up and about again. Wow, so still weekly, you, yeah, yeah, you get yep. those, and yep. pretty full on. Yeah, pretty full on. Yeah, until I sort of sit back and relax a bit mm. and. Take a f- few little medications mm. and yeah, just that type of thing, you know, and and forget things, you know, um, just little things, you know, where you left your keys. I know that we're all we're all getting old and mm. we we do find these, but mm. people tell me these are the symptoms and and they are the symptoms. Mm. I, I I know they are because mm. I'm, I'm start to uh, to go through them, you know, especially with um, you know mood swings and things like mm. that. So um, yeah, look, I've just got to carry on and see how things go. Can you do sort of rehab or training? Have they given you things that you can actually do? I saw Peter just at the start of the year and he's given me a book to do, so uh, this big, thick book, and mm. um, just remind things, just things that you, you keep on doing. So I try and do that, you know, once or twice a week just to yep. try and get myself back into it. But uh, but every day sort of stuff, look, I, I kept myself busy. I, you know, we got a business, you know, I'm still tied up in football a little bit. I train Tuesday mornings, Thursday mornings with a couple of blokes. So, um, yeah, I try to keep myself active, and so mm. I don't go into that um, where I don't I, where I don't do nothing. Mm. I'm trying to keep myself pretty mm. active and to keep my brain turning over all the time. Right, as you said, I know you, you're always a really positive, happy man, and you, you're obviously conscious of that. You said, but when, do you, do you have those times like mentally? Is it a struggle for you? Do you do you feel dark about it? If that's the right um, word, or I feel frustrated with it, you know, because. I know that this is something which I've I've done and I've done it many many times before and uh, but now I, I struggle doing it you know it's 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 frustrating something uh, like when you, you you tell your wife something and and then and you know, the next day you say look um, I've got to, yeah yeah you told me that yesterday just right. things like that yeah. look I, I know that we all go through it and we yeah. have our times but it seems like it happens to me quite a bit or yeah. if you tell someone you want to meet someone I've got to write it all down now mm-hmm. to make sure that I. I make the appointment yeah. and write it down, and so I look through mm. my diary and and go through. But it's times where I've um, said things over and over again, mm. and you know, and my mm. wife, you know, Leanne, she's um, she said, "John, you've told me that. You told me that six times now." I said, oh, "Okay, mm. yeah, yeah." And then I'm thinking to myself, "Oh God, I must be going crazy." You know, it's it's it, yeah. it, it is frustrating, and 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 for her as yeah. well. Mentally, though, you're in good shape. Though you feel yeah, yeah, pretty yeah. positive. Yeah, yeah so. look, I've always been pretty positive in in life itself. And people tell me you can't do this, you can't do that, but I just keep plugging away at it. Mm. And uh, but you know, life's good. You know, kids are fantastic. I've you know, got a great job, great business. Yep. So if if it's it's all about keeping that even and uh, and that. Do you feel nervous about the future, or do you? Getting the regular tests, you feel like you'll be able to stay on top of things. Yeah, I get nervous about it. Yeah, because I sort of wonder how I'm going to be this time next year, and and well, this time in five years' time, and uh, you know, all our kids are getting married and having grandchildren, and um, you know, you want to you want to make sure that you can enjoy that as well. Yeah, it's it's at times it's daunting, mm. uh, nervous, yes, worried, yes, uh, but as long as I try and keep up all these tests to make sure that um, that things are going in the right direction. Would you do it all again the same? 
Uh, yeah, I'll probably, I mean, you I'll, can't obviously yeah. know go back on the field after yep. you've had injuries and things, yep. but in terms of knowing what you know now and yep. having such a wonderful time and playing. Yeah. I, I, I guess I would do it all again, but probably a little bit more smarter in the way that the game is played now because it's it's completely different to the way that we, we played mm. 20, 30, 40 years ago. Yep. So, uh, and there's, you know, protocols now which has to go through uh, mm. with 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 trainers, with doctors and physios and things like that. So maybe if that was around in, in those days, um, uh, things would be a little bit different. But um, but no, I wouldn't change it now. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing, isn't it, to be a piece like that? Yeah. You know, you have no regrets. Oh, no regrets on the footy field. No, nah, mm. sure. It's something I loved and enjoyed and got a lot out of it and just taking me around the world and things like that. But, uh, but knowing what I know now, mm. I might have been a little bit different probably back in those days. But no one knew that at all. No, of course not. Do you know no, what I mean? And you right. think, because you, well, you said, what, 30-odd maybe, maybe mm. 40 concussions. Mm. You would imagine that the, you didn't miss much footy. No. If that had been nowadays, you wouldn't have played anywhere near as many games. No, that's correct, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's it's something which, you know, I'm, I'm very grateful that, you know, I played, you know, over 400 games in, mm. in, in total in Sample and AFL. So pretty lucky to, to do that. What about, you know, for parents now who look at their kids mm. and they see their concussion situation and that, would you ever advise kids not to play footy? I wouldn't advise them not to play football, but just try to be, be a bit careful. I know that's hard to say coming from me, but mm. uh, I think that as long as they they follow the right protocol, if if, this, if they do get badly hit or, mm. or concussed, so... I think you just got to make sure that the the your your child's well and knows mm. what's going on and what's happened and goes through the right right rest and and that mm. for the for the brain. So yeah, it's very very important you do that. Mate, I want to go back a little bit. Now you're one of nine, correct? And you grew up. You are a heart and soul Elizabeth boy. Yep. You've got uh, red, white, and blue vein uh, blood just pumping yep. through the veins, haven't I you? Have. Yeah, very proud and very where I come from and what yeah. I've done and uh, got a beautiful family. You got. Uh, five brothers and three sisters. Uh, Where did you sit in the pecking order? I sat number, lucky number seven. So, right. Uh, so, we'll so give me the names in order of the ages. Diane, Brian, Michael, <laughs> Neville, John. No, so, <laughs> so hang on, let me try this again. Yep. Diane, Brian, Annette, Michael, Neville, Jared, John, Veronica, and Christopher. Wow. Yeah. That so, is amazing. Was, so uh, being sort of that much younger than the others, did all the other bigger ones sort of teach you how to play football? Is that where you sort of learnt yeah, to go Yeah, probably having probably, um, uh, f- four older brothers who, yeah. were, who were, you know, a bit taller than me and a bit stronger than me and that. They, yeah. they they certainly took the piss out of me quite a bit because yeah, I was yeah. so so little and I used to run around them and, you know, yeah. show them the ball and this sort of type of thing. And But, uh, yeah, you just grew up in that sort of environment. Nothing came easy, you know, we, yeah. m- uh, dad worked pretty hard and mum sort of tried to look after us with the, 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 the home and, uh, we lived in a, um, housing trust home. Yep. So that was pretty tough and, you know, but we, we all loved each other. It all went well. We, yeah. we all went to school. Uh, we all caught the bus. Dad was our, our driver on Saturdays because he had to take, you know, my other brothers to footy. Yep. Had to take my, my, my sisters to netball or yeah, yeah, whatever yeah. What, what they were doing. So dad was just like a taxi driver on the sad day. What car did he have? Like he, there was no Taragos back then, was there? What, no, what were you getting around back in? Back in those days then, it was, um, <laughs> I remember this old black hearse we used to go around in. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, and then there was. It was, uh, it was a genuine hearse. Well, no, it wasn't was... a, a, a hearse itself, but it was yeah. just this big. Station car, wagon, yeah. Again. Big black car. Right. Was back in the, in the, in yeah. the, um, in the, uh, the 60s. Yep. And then uh, I remember Dad having an old Valiant, an old FC Holden as well. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, just remember those days. And we used to all just jump in there, cramp across. The Did nights. you ever have all nine and mum and dad in the one car? I think at times there when we used to go see our grandparents, our, our <laughs> nana and pa and pop and that, we used to sort of, you know, everybody squeeze in the car. And because I was the smallest one and my sister was the next smallest one yeah. and my little brother, he was like only just a baby. We, yes. we all laid across each other's laps and, uh, you know, they might have been squeezing and Dad was driving the car and move over and uh, and my other brother and sister. It was fun. It was great. How, how far did you have to drive to Nan and Pops? At that stage then, 
my dad's father, he lived at um, Seacliff, like oh, geez. Uh, right down, yeah. down south, past so Glenelg. It was a fair way. trip. Oh, fair trip, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and I used to sort of sit in the back with my eyes, and they used to go back at, at night time, driving home, and just yeah. see the, the the lights, you know, just and just all this sort of thing. So it was it was funny. It was yeah. great, but uh, we enjoyed. It. And my mum's mum and dad, they just lived around Crawdon Way. How far away were you from the Elizabeth Oval where you grew up? I was about two k's away. Right. So and love Central right from the start. Oh yeah, Bulldog support all the way through. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I grew up. Uh, Break for the Bulldogs. Favourite player was Tony Castley. Went to St. Mary Magdalene's Primary School and then finished up going to Fremont High. And yeah. and uh, funny about uh, St. Mary Magdalene's because Tony Castley's kids all went through uh, St. Mary Magdalene's as well. Right. And as I was growing up as a kid in grade seven, we had this football carnival, but we didn't have a coach. So I wrote this letter to Tony Castley because he was a captain of, of, of Central yeah. at, at that stage. To your idol. He's my idol. So I wrote a letter to him to say, yeah. uh, hi, Tony, you know, John Platt from St. Mary Magdalene's, we have got a, a football carnival and we haven't got a coach. Can you come out and just teach us some 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 skills, you know, yeah. one night, the, th- the Thursday night uh, before the carnival? So he came out and, and he, he took us for coach for for, uh, for coaching on that night and we finished up playing in the grand final but we lost it so right. uh, it was great so it was a memory which I'll I'll, yeah, I'll yeah. never forget so and and great man and loved him as a, a player as a person yep. he had a beautiful family I played yeah. with uh, with Nathan and Justin yep. when I came back from Hawthorne so yeah that's right yeah, yeah so it was it was great what was Elizabeth like in the sixties and seventies when you were growing up it was fun you know to where it is now it's probably different you know life mm. different life's changed a lot over the last probably 40 years, but it was fun. It was easy. It was safe. You could, you know, leave your bike out in front of your house and, and leave it there for two days and it'll be there. And, uh, yeah. you know, the house will be open, the cars will be open. It was something which you, you, you grew up with and yeah. you never knew nothing different. So yeah. I had my mates there. I went to school in that area there. And, uh, it was, it was, it was a fun time. Was it a tough upbringing? Were you guys, you know, were you struggling financially? Cause to feed that many kids is astounding. Yeah. I suppose you, clothe you and everything. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, look, and and this is where I suppose growing up, you don't really knew what was going on with with mum and dad with yep. the, with the money side of thing. Because dad worked in a in a drive through hotel. Yep. As a manager, so he he did that for ten years or so. And mum, mm. yeah, well, mum was busy just having babies and <laughs> raising nine kids. Yeah, exactly. It was pretty tough. And mum would have been really we, busy. We sort of like didn't know anything different, yeah. you know, and, um, mm. you know, mum, can we have this? Mum, can we have that? And it wasn't so, maybe not brand new, but it yeah. was good secondhand stuff yep. or, yep. or no, you can't have it because, yeah. you know, we've got food to feed and yep. we've got bills to pay and things like that. So we, we never sort of whinged about not getting mm. nothing. We just went about lives and, yep. and knowing that when we got home, there was food on the table, there was yeah. a bed to sleep in, we had clean yep. clothes and we, had, we and, and we were happy. Yeah. We had Great lot of people. We had lots of mates, a lot of people come into the house, come through the front door, go out the back door. It yeah. was an, an open house. And mum was like that. Yeah. You know, she so, wouldn't invite anybody. Did you, um, so did you ever get your own boots or were you always sort of come down from every brother? Uh, and- always came down from your brother. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. My first, first uh, boots I can always remember were the plastic boots. Oh, yeah. So yeah. it was, I was just a, uh, a six-year-old kid playing under nines for Elizabeth, sitting in the four pocket, kicking the dew off the grass in, yeah. in my plastic boots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you know, it was, um, you know, finally when the other guys got a bit taller, my other brothers got a yeah. bit taller and got bigger. Their their leather boots weren't, weren't they, they, they didn't fit them anymore, so right. they came down to me and yeah, you know, and the shorts and the jumpers yeah, and yeah. the socks. You know, by the time they came to me, they had big holes <laughs> in and. Uh, it it didn't bother me because all I wanted to do was just play footy. Yeah. yeah. Can you remember your your first pair of your own boots? I remember buying a pair. Yeah. And this is like uh, playing my first year at Central Districts in 1979, under 17s. I was yeah. 15 years old. Yeah. And I brought a pair of Puma, that, and they were blue, light, oh, light really? blue with with a white uh, white uh, Puma stripe going. Hang on, so, mate, that would have been. That would have been a little out there back then. It was, It was yeah. black or nothing, yeah, wasn't it? it was, I think they were going out cheap. So, uh, blue mum, boots. Mum said, no, nah, you can buy these. They're, they're cheap enough. So I think they were blue. I remember wearing blue Puma boots. You, I, I can imagine you were a star as a kid, so you could probably back up wearing the light blue boots, oh, couldn't you? probably back in those days. I didn't know. As long as I just got some new boots, it was something <laughs> yeah. special for me. Oh, that's and, great. Um, and to go out and to play with Centrals at the age of 15, yeah. 16 and 79 was great. Did you have the long hair then? When did the long hair start? I've always had wavy hair yeah. and longish wavy hair. And I used to try and comb it, but never worked for me. It was, 
You know, there was knots. There was all sorts of trouble in there. <laughs> but I suppose when the long hair started coming for me was we went on a trip to Numia, the, the, yeah. the Central's boys in 1982. Right. Uh, when you, you would know this. So when yeah. you go on footy trips, you know, you, you don't wash your hair, you don't no, brush your hair, no. you don't brush your teeth, you don't, you, you just, you don't do those types You've of things. You've got stuff to do. You're busy. That's right. We're busy. <laughs> so <laughs> then that whole week I just, just let it go and, yep. and from there on I just thought, oh, well, this, it was quite easy just to wash let it, it go. Yeah, let it go. And so it was, yeah, it washed it whatever once or twice a week and just let yep. it go and then it just got longer, it got curlier and the more times that I didn't comb it, yep. it just become curly. So I just thought. That was a bit of a trend. So have you not had short hair since then? Not hair. And not short hair since then. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I reckon I had a cut about once or twice. It's That's still all. is that really? Yeah. Oh, you don't even get a cut, you don't get a trim. You no. don't even need it. No, don't need it. Well look, it's all falling out now. I just I'm leaving. You've still got it though. You've still got a you've still got a nice crop at the back. Yeah. Yeah, a bit greyish and stuff. So, yeah. But yeah. So I, I saw just, all those years playing footy, you just didn't even bother getting a cut. No nah, trims, no nothing. No, no, no. Imagine all the money you, well, you, that's right, yeah. you saved over the years by oh, not having haircuts. Now I'm waiting for some sponsorship deal to come out and they can shave and brew and yeah. do all that sort of stuff. Well, so. mate, you, you imagine now, a haircut's probably about 50 bucks. Yeah. You know, you think of what it would have been. So I want to know, at Central Districts, obviously, did you, you took to it pretty well quickly. Yeah. You're obviously a very good junior football. You kicked 18 goals in the game once, didn't you? Yeah, I did as a, as a junior. Yeah. Look, Where were you uh, playing? On the ball or just I'll hanging playing on the ball. Pocket? Playing the ball. We were playing um, Eastern Park, had it uh, Elizabeth there. And yeah. um, look, and, and it's not sort of pumping my tyres up. It was just one of those well, days. Eight, that, we can pump them up for 18 uh, goals. Well, 18 goals, yeah. But the, 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 the coach actually, the, the first half, all the, the forwards went to the backs yeah. and the back went to the forwards. But they, they we kept the, the midfield as a midfielder right. and a great mate of mine, Pat Swart, who was, yes. who, who was, who was a ruck and I played footy since yep. I was six right through and he's still my best mate now. Yeah. He was a ruckman. So he, he gave the, the ball to me, the f- f- first use of ball and silver service and, uh, lucky enough to, um, to stay in the middle for the whole game and kicked 18 goals. Yeah, How many so points? One. That was my left foot too. 18-1. 18-1. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> yeah. So it was, look, I, I was fortunate enough. To, to be, you know, okay player as a kid. Oh, yeah. I won a couple of best and fairest at, at the Elizabeth Football Club and yeah. and then the opportunity to go to the Centrals at the age of 15 was great. Yeah. So in 81, you obviously play your first game. You're 18 years of age uh, and take to it pretty well. Mm. You had a good first year? Yeah. Yeah, I loved it. I just loved playing football. I, you yeah. know, that was my, my let out. You know, it was mm. my happy time on the ground and, and you yeah. know, and, and just enjoying it. And, uh, and I was super fit. Uh, you know, I never, I never carried much weight, and yeah. so I just went out, and you know, probably had a little bit of, a uh, little bit of learning to do, which I did with 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 Daryl Hicks, how how the yep. game was played, and this type of thing. So, and so you yeah. signed with Hawthorne after that first year back yeah. in eighty one. Mm-hmm. Were you inclined to go? Because you get what well, you get tied for three years or something back then. That's you? right. Yeah, um, Did, inclined to go. Probably back in those days, we we probably yeah. And you you can ask all the the Kernan, the Bradleys, the yeah. Motleys, and yep. uh, McGuinnesses and uh, these types of blokes who who were taunted to go over at the end of eighty one because mm. you know we 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 played Till Cup in nineteen eighty and we yep. won the the the, the Till Cup competition over in Perth. So mm. all those guys who played in that Till Cup in nineteen eighty mm. all became um Sanford League players in, in eighty one yeah. who who become superstars. Mm. Yeah, you know, there was you know, there was Carlton after Kerners, there was I think Brattles was looking at going to Essendon, I was looking at going to Hawthorne and so on and so mm. on and so on. And then at the end of eighty one, Hawthorne came over and uh, they they said, "Look, you know, we're pretty keen you to come over mm. to Hawthorne. No rush. I know yep. at that stage, and no one sort of went over straight away because it wasn't yeah. a draft system or nothing. So, yeah. look, when you're ready, we just think that uh, you know we would love you to come to Hawthorne. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, no worries. And at that stage, then all of us blokes probably had in mind that we we wanted to we we set goals that we wanted to win premierships for our club. Yep. It was, it was my my first aim to do that because yeah. we never won a premiership and we've been in the competition for 30 years yeah. since then or 20 years since then. I wanted to play state football, which mm-hmm. I did the, the following year in 82. Yeah. I wanted to play 100 games for, for Central Districts mm-hmm. to get your name yep. up on the locker, yeah. So, yeah. which is great. So that was sort of our goal and right. said, okay, yeah, look, we're yeah very keen to come over, but just we want to learn the game a bit more. And yep. yeah, no worries. So in 84... I just won the McGarry medal and Carlton found out that I was a Carlton supporter. As a yeah. kid growing up, I was a mad Carlton supporter. And you just lapsed the three years at Hawthorne. And that three years right. had just, just lapsed over because the contract which I signed with Hawthorne was 
uh, they could uh, they could try and get me there yep. within the three years. So that contract lapsed. Did that come with cash? Um, that 81 one? Uh, 81, I think $1,000. Okay. It wasn't. Still not yeah, back then. $1,000 from Kim Elizabeth was a yeah. lot of money. <laughs> so in 84, the yeah. I think the contract lapsed and Hawthorne were away on a footy trip and Carlton mm. came over with, with uh, John Elliott and Ian Collins. Yeah. And they signed up Coonahan, Bradley and Motley and um, they rang me and they said, look, we've just signed these three blokes yep. up. We want to see if we can get your signature. So we went around and uh, it was sort of a funny time and my manager then was Bobby Zarello, a great fella, yeah, yep. and we sort of went up into the, the hotel room and there's John Elliott and Ian Collins sitting there yeah. and and they say, look, John, we've just signed up Kerner's Bradley and Motley, mm. and you're the other piece of the puzzle for us. Yep. And we're going to offer you eight thousand right. dollars. Wow, that was a lot of money for a kid from Elizabeth. So I looked at Bobby, and you know, I sort of grinning and thinking that, geez, I've I've spent this money already. I know what I'm going to buy. Did you want you buried for Carlton? I was. Carlton Did you support. want to go to Carlton? Well, sort of, but I also had Hawthorne in the back of my mm. mind. And I said, and I looked at Bobby, and Bobby goes, "Well, no, he's not coming." Yeah. And sort of looked at Bobby, thinking, "Mate, yep. what are you doing? You know, I, I, yeah. I'm, you know, I want to go to." Go so, over and play in Victoria. You can't want a couple of flags around that time too, yeah. so they were good. Mm. Yeah. So I looked at Bobby and Bobby goes, no, he wants $20,000. I said, okay, yep, yeah, I want $20,000. So right. thanks, Bobby. So they gave me twenty grand and uh, went out and brought myself a nice Peter Brock Commodore. And <coughs> What'd you pay for that? I think I paid it like 18500 Brand new. Yeah, brand Jeez. new. Yeah. So you so, just about spent the whole lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I got me a mate from Pagey, from Peter Page, so yeah. well, it, was, it was great. So. Yeah. So then at the end of 80, 85, I played one more year at Centrals yeah. and went, trying to win that that, yep. that premiership and yeah. with the club. And because we had a really good year in 84, we came third. We lost both of our finals. Yep. And then you won uh, the McGarry 84. 84, yep, yeah. Had a good year. And uh, yep. I think I just, I said, oh, look, we're so close. We we came third. And, and to win that first premiership mm. with, with Centrals was always my 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 ambition. Yeah, it was what that's always what I wanted to do. And it was her first one, and yep. uh, so unfortunately we didn't. So I, I stayed for one more year. Kerners, Kerners and Brattles and Motts and all these blokes all played for one more year, yep. end of 85, and then we, we, we went yep. over to an 86. And then in that time in 85, we had Cowboy New as a coach at Centrals, yeah. and he was great mates with Alan Jeans because yep. he coached him in the 66 grand final for St. Kilda. Yeah. So, and then Alan Jeans came over to, to coach us at Centrals in 85 for – two or three times during that year because right. and in that time just as a it, just as a mate just come over and he right? took us for a couple of training sessions i think and also to convince me to go to, to hawthorne yeah. as well so yep. even but, though i signed with carlton i was always in hawthorne's so how do you be carlton signed and, yep. and you signed for a certain amount of time three years three years yeah you're driving to the training in this Brock Commodore, yep. looking good at Central, was it? Parked <laughs> yep. in the car park there. Yeah. What colour was it? It was that maroon colour. The oh, yeah. the um the maroon with the HDT stickers yes. down the side. Yeah, and yeah, no, the no, power no. windows. Yeah. The boys loved it. When we go out on Friday night, well, the boys are sitting there. Oh, look good. This, you know, power windows up and down. I said, "Stop it! You're going to wreck it." So <laughs> it was it um, was fun. So you're tied to them for five, for three years. Yeah. How on earth do you get to Hawthorne? Right. Okay. We uh, at the end of eighty five. I I've decided that uh, look. I probably my my life is with, with Hawthorne because Lee Matthews had just retired at at, mm. at Hawthorne. I, I could sneak in there, be first yep. rover or second rover with uh, Richard uh, Loveridge. Oh, yeah. Carlton have got quite a few small men. So yep. um, and even though I'm thinking that I'm not going to play reserves footy, I'm always going to play play yeah. for the for, for for the league side. But I suppose that for what Alan always came over, and Hawthorne was a family club, and you know I'm not saying that Carlton yeah. weren't either, but uh, you know we would love you to come, John. Where you know we're missing you, that type of player, your type of player. Yeah. Lee Matthews is about to retire. We need some help on ball, and you know it's a family club. You come from a big family. We love your family and stuff. Yeah. So at the end of it, I had to ring up Carlton and say to them that uh, I wasn't going to Carlton anymore. I was going to go and play with Hawthorne. So it went to court. Right. Okay. Yeah. So I did all the preseason with Hawthorne. Yeah. I played all the preseason games with Hawthorne. Mm. We beat Carlton in the night grand final. Jeez. I was playing in that because I got a special permit. Were they running after you? Yes. They, they yeah, actually, were, were they targeting were, you? Oh, I don't know. I'm sure they were targeting or me. Or were they, were they in your ear? Because oh, obviously yeah, it was a big, were, yeah. big deal at this point, wasn't well, it? It was, yeah. Massive yeah. deal. Because I didn't know if I was still going to play with Hawthorne or Carlton. Yeah. I, and then the, the court case was set on the Monday 
after the night grand final, and it was the Monday before my first VFL game. So I, I, I didn't know where I was playing at this stage. God. So it went to court on the Monday, Tuesday, yeah. and Wednesday. The contract which Carlton gave me in 1984 was invalid. It wasn't a proper VFL contract back in those days. Is that right? Yeah. And they lost well, the, the 20,000 wasn't that, invalid? No. <laughs> that I was all right. The, I, kept, I kept the car. So, <laughs> so then, um, Is that right? then um, uh, we, uh, Hawthorne won and we played against my first VFL game was a game 1986 against Carlton Football Club at Waverley Park. I got best on ground. It was amazing. So you played them two weeks in a row because you played yeah. them in the night grand final. Did you win the yeah. night grand final? Yeah, we did. And then we beat the week after. So essentially, did Hawthorne discover that the contract was invalid? Yes. So yeah. they had yeah. clever and, enough and it was legal. A, it people. was a matter of just going to court wow. and setting the court case. And, and the longer that, that Carlton kept it going, yeah. the longer that I wasn't allowed to play, but I was allowed yeah. to, to play in trial games, yeah, and night yeah. games with the special permit. And then. Best on ground in the first game. Yeah. So it was. Um, I, I want to get. I want to understand this, like in the mind of a champion. Mm. So when you're playing at Central and you're on fire and then obviously at Hawthorne, you're just brilliant, which we'll get into. What was your mindset going into a game of football? Did you go into games? This is what I always wonder with people who was, you know, as good as you. Did you go into games knowing you could beat anyone? Mm -hmm. You did. Yeah. No doubt ever. No doubt. Even as a young kid playing junior footy? Playing junior footy. We got, um, you know, I was probably lucky enough to play junior football for Elizabeth Football Club for about uh, nine years. I was six and then 15, yeah, about yeah. nine years. And um, during that that nine years at Elizabeth Football Club, I think I won about two or three premierships. We played finals yeah. football. We lost a few. So I never sort of like being on the bottom. Yeah. And I uh, probably never told this to anybody, but as a kid growing up, I was captain or vice captain, whatever it was. Yeah. When I came off the ground, if we'd lost, I would ball. Cry my eyes out because we lost. I was that so competitive. Right. And I used to hide in the corner. And mum used to, you know, hug me and yeah. you know, little Johnny, yeah. you know, and this type of thing. And tears yeah. would come. I said, you know, John's okay. It's always next week. And what, so, and what age was this, you reckon? Oh, probably eight, nine, yeah, ten, yeah. Yep. that type of rages. Yep. And, but it hurt losing oh, that much. It hurt losing so much because I hate losing. That's um, that's amazing. So you, even when you, when you went to the VFL then mm. and the big time as it was seen, Still never any doubt, no matter who you lined no. up against? No. Did you ever get a point in your career at any point when you were sort of went, oh, this bloke's got me up? No, no, I was always a pretty positive person. It's pretty amazing. Because a, a lot of people, yeah, a lot of people, ah, oh, you're too small, you do yeah. this and that. And, yep. and I just wanted to go and prove it wrong. And um, and then every time I, I ran on the ground, I was nervous. I think that once you stop yeah. being nervous, that's time to give it away. I was yep. nervous about, about, you know, if I'm going to play a good game, yeah. what bloke was going to tag me, what bloke was going to yep. stand on me and that type of thing. But I always always went in the game thinking that I was going to be the best player on the ground. Yeah. I was going to take the best mark. I was going to take the do the, the yep. best block, the best tackle, the best goal, yeah. the best this and this and that. I know that sounds selfish. No, but, it doesn't. But, it doesn't at all. But it, no, it, no. I wouldn't say that it happened every time, no. but I just went into that, yeah. that positive yep. main thought of uh, yeah. being the best player every week. I want to be the yeah. best player. I want to yep. I wanted to get my 30, 40 touches a game yeah. and kick a super goal and this sort of thing. I love that, yeah. just having that amount of confidence. Yeah. You know, I mean, I ha- having the skill to back it up probably helps as well and you're as fast as lightning, yeah. no doubt. Yeah, I love that. I can imagine people who obviously succeed the level you get to and whether it's Tiger Woods playing golf or yeah. you know, Ash Barty playing tennis, you go in there going, I am the best. I yeah. can I can take yeah. on anyone. That's right. And that's not Tommy totally big headed. No, 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 I don't think yeah. no, it's not been big headed yeah. because you backed it up brilliantly. Yeah. When you get to the VFL at Hawthorne, it was an unbelievable run. Mm. And you played in the flag in that first year in eighty six and just had this amazing amount of time. Mm. Was the expectation that the step up was gonna be huge or I mean you, there was still some unbelievable players playing SNFL footy in the eighties. So yeah. you're playing at a great level. Oh we did. Yeah. Was the step up what you thought it would be. Or oh, yeah. You, but yeah, you eased into it. I mean, yeah. clearly your performances just went bang because you went up too. Yeah, well, we probably had that because of the state games. I think mm. that the, the, yeah, don't get me wrong here, in a sense of I'm trying to be too biased in the in the 80s, but I reckon yeah. that we were the, we the Sample was the best league in the 80s. You know, there was dozens of blokes who came out of the Sample to play in the VFL, AFL, yeah. who, who turned VFL, AFL around, yep. you know, you know, 
Danny Hughes, you know, yeah. Tony McGuinness. I've spoken about Coonahan and Bradley yep. and Motley. Yeah, you know, I know Mott's only had one year, but yeah. his one year was unbelievable. Tony Antropus, who came mm. over. Yeah, you know, Mark Naley, you know, mm. he, he came to Carlton in eighty seven and they finished up winning eighty seven yep. premiership because yep. they needed more more run and he was the yeah. one who, who who turned them around. So the expectations, you you probably knew what it was when you played state football. Yeah. And I was lucky enough to to play probably a handful of state footy yep. before I went over to to, to mm. Victoria. And even when you play for for South Australia, you knew that the Vicks always brought over taggers to yeah. tag Naley, McGee, yes. yep. Platten, Antrobus, yep. Bradley. You know, we were five top runners at that stage and who they actually had to bring over five taggers to stand yeah. us. So yep. So, uh, but you know, we, yeah, and and we grew up together. We grew up in the two cup together. We played under sevens against each other, but then we finished up playing in 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 state yeah. games together. So we we yeah. sort of knew yeah. what what the game was all about. The step up to it, yeah, we expect it's going to be you know tougher, harder, yeah. bigger bodies. It's in Melbourne. It's colder, wetter. The grounds are going to be yep. heavier. So you just adapted to it, and you knew what yeah. was going to happen. Do you remember the moment when you won the 86 grand final? Because obviously you didn't get that premiership with the doggies. Yeah. But you get it pretty quickly when you get to Melbourne. Can you remember that moment? Uh, it, was it was a like? moment. It was, uh, I don't know, uh, relief. You know, it was because yeah. we, we lost to Carlton in the uh, in the second semi, so we had to play in the prelim. And mm. we were the better side of the year, or us and Carlton. But yep. I think we finished top and then Carlton beat us. And then um, we, we beat them in the grand final in 86. But uh it was more a, a, a relief, you know, your first yeah. year in, in, in AFL football, amazing, you know. Yeah, yeah. And to play five years at Centrals and and play finals but not not to win a premiership yep. and to get to a, a, a grand final and, and to win uh, the premiership was yeah. was was amazing. It was the, – the thought was just – everything just went off your shoulders and you – yeah. And that's what you play footy for. Yeah. Pretty much. And then you win a Brownlow in 87, mm. you're playing flags. I think what your first six years, you're playing five grand finals, you win four flags yeah. and a Brownlow. Mm. It was uh, <laughs> party time. It you was, picked the right club going to Hawthorne and hold yeah, out, didn't you? Yeah, it was. Um, I'm not sort of saying that, that Carlton wouldn't have done that. But, yeah, um, yeah. It was just amazing, you know, and, and I still class myself as a kid who comes from Elizabeth who grew yep. up in a housing trust home with, with five brothers and three yeah. sisters and we had nothing and we, and we, and what we got, we, we, we just appreciated it more, I think. And to yep. grow up in that, in that, uh, in, environment, I think you, 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 you never take nothing for granted. Yep. What comes your way, you, you take it and yeah. you love it. Yeah. yeah. You talked, like, imagine you were tagged just about every game you played. Yeah. Who was tagging you, and how tough did it get? Uh, it got, uh, yeah, it got. It's pretty tough. I think it probably more came up when when Cowboy Neil was was coaching Centrals in '84, yep. and that was the year I probably won the McGarry Medal. Yeah. So I was, I was playing some good footy. '83, I I done a knee, and uh, I was out for about six or eight weeks, and so I wasn't dominant as much as I yep. was in '84. So. So after I did after in the eighty three, we might have made the finals for Centrals. Yep. After I got super fit in eighty four, I ran nearly every day yeah. in pre season. I ran Christmas Day pre season eighty four. Yep. 83, 84. And I be, became the super fit kid in nineteen eighty four and and we started off well. Cowboy Neil was the coach and we got some new players and it was just a different environment at at Centrals with with, with Cowboy there. It was it was fun. Yeah, we worked hard. We got a, a fitness coach involved, and um, yeah, it was good. So when you're getting tagged, though, it, whether it's at oh, Sanford level, yeah, or or at the Hawks, I imagine it, it must have been ruthless. It was, and you were getting tagged pretty much every game you would yep. have played. I imagine, would you? Yep. Yep, Any game was. you can yep. hardly you wouldn't I, have been. I, tagged. I knew that if we were playing the Bulldogs, it'll yep. be Libertore. If yeah. we were playing. Richmond, it was Chris Bond at the time. If it yep. was Collingwood, it was Shane Kerrison. If it was, you know, other yeah. sides, um, yep. Melbourne, Dean Sharon. Yeah, that, right. that, you just knew straight away yep. that you just got to keep working hard and hard and yep. hard all the time. I remember Jeansy, yeah, there was a couple of times there where where I was, I was getting no, he was just tagged me, just building me and stopped yeah. me from getting the ball and, and this type of thing. And Jeansy says, oh, suddenly we, we need a lift out of you. You know, just keep running, yep. keep running, keep running. You run them off their feet. You are super fit. Yep. So I just kept that in the back of my mind. And probably by about halfway through the third quarter, they started, right. fit, you know, started yeah. um, coming off me a bit and getting yep. tired and stuff. So that quarter and a half, I – 
you know, I, I excelled yeah. as much as I can and, yep. you know, and got better and better and yep. better and, and we finished up win, win, winning games as well. You had Dermy and you obviously had a whole heap of superstars yep. in your Hawthorne yep. team. Were they uh, involved in trying to stop some of the tags at times? Oh, at times, yeah. They had a little plan they, set they, up? They, they had a few plans set up to say, <laughs> Rat, uh, just run them past me and I'll just give them a bit of a clip be, uh, beyond the play, so... Yeah, no, no, we, no, I was lucky yeah. to have you know, Gary Ayres and Dipper and yeah. Dermot and Tucky and um, you know, these types of players, Gary Buck and Arrow, who can, you know, it doesn't matter what part of the ground that you, you were on. Yep. You know, there was Ayres in the back line, there was Dermot in the forward line, there was Dipper in the middle. So yeah. whenever time you, you, you're, you're around, just, hey, Dipper, do me a favour, can you? And just give me <laughs> like a clip on the they ears. And, geez, yeah. it was tough footy back then. It was, yeah, and look, and, and you know, I don't condone uh, condone this no. type of things, but that's what happened back yeah. in those days. Yeah, yeah. The '89 Grand Final we touched yeah. on earlier. To me, that is one of the most amazing games of football you'll ever see. Mm. And I think you know, we look at now. If a team kicks 100 points, you get two teams kick 100 points. You, it's it's amazing. And I think in that match. It was absolutely phenomenal. You end up with like 39 scoring shots. They have 33 scoring mm-hmm. shots. So it's just balls whizzing around. But it was brutal. It was brutal, yeah. Uh, sorry, mate, I can't give you too much. No. I, I can't remember. I know. I, I got whacked in the first quarter and I finished up uh, yeah. uh, coming off the ground at quarter time and I can't remember nothing of it. I can't remember driving to the game. I can't remember Jeansy's, you know, prep talk yeah. before the game and the atmosphere before the game. I yep. cannot remember nothing like that. So... So at quarter time, uh, I, I got hit in the first quarter yep. somewhere. I, I, you know, so you even, and Buddha Hocking had a pretty yeah, big collision. Yeah, because it was sort of, mate, probably tagging me. Or yeah. Every time that we got went near the ball or near a pack, I did watch the, the game over and over again. And every, yeah. every time I, I was in a pack, there was there was arms and legs going around. So yep. And Buddha was always involved. I'm not saying that Buddha did it to me, but yep. I think Buddha was a fair, fair chance because he, yeah. he used to do this to me quite a bit. And then at quarter time, I you know, we 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 go in a huddle, you know, Hawthorne yep. this side, uh, Geelong this side, and I started walking to the middle of the ground. Right. And the, the doctor uh, told Jeans, he said, "Look, I just got to go see the rat. I'm not yeah. sure if he's if he's feeling too well." So the doctor came out as I was walking to the middle of the ground, the circle of the ground. Doctor goes, "Rat, what are you doing?" I said, "I'm just going down to have a shower, getting ready for the motor cave." The motor cave was the day before the grand oh, final. So grand final it was um, parade. Much, yeah. So is that right? So probably pretty much from there on, the doctor sort of said, "No, nah, look, yeah, you, you, you know, just come on the bench and sit on the bench yeah. and see how we go, and if you, yeah. if you feel any better." But I can't remember nothing. No. no, I remember watching that grand final, and it was like a war of attrition in yeah. a way because obviously everyone knows the Dermy yeah. situation Dermot. with Yates coming off, yeah. Dipper, Dipper, yeah. so punctured lung, punctured lung, I in think. The third um, quarter. So Dermy ends up with broken ribs and yeah. punctured lung. lung. Gary Ayres, yep. he hurt himself pretty badly. He had, he? He had a, a thigh, he tore a thigh yeah. muscle, which I was sitting next yep. to, which Gary always mentions yeah. that I was sitting next to and ask him the same questions yep. every, over and over again for the next three quarters. And right. he was ready to belt me because he was sick and tired <laughs> of me hearing the same questions. And Darren Pritchard, yeah. I reckon, hurt himself. Pritchard hurt himself. Um, Scotty McGuinness was slight concussed. Yeah. Uh, he hit the point post, I think it was, yeah. uh, for Geelong. Uh, Buddha Hocking got a broken jaw. Yeah, I think he uh, had stitches in his lip. I think Dipper cleaned, evened him up, him up, didn't he, yeah, after think, your yep. situation, he lost a tooth. So uh, so out of – if the if a game became a draw, yeah. it would have to play the week, a- week yep. after, and there would have been probably six or seven blokes missing from yeah. the grand final. So, Well, I think Buddha's brother, Stephen, who we all know at the AFL yeah. now, he, he ruptured his scrotum oh, okay. yeah. in that yeah. game. So it, clearly everything worked later because he had yeah. kids. but. Yeah. The amount of injuries, and I think Damien Burke might have done his ankle on that. Yeah. So it was just it was. a phenomenal game. But like in the first quarter, you guys kick eight goals to two. Yeah, eight yeah. goals in the opening quarter of a grand final. And we sort of knew that they were going to come out and and, yeah. and try and build us because we've always had that tussle with them. Yeah. at this at the the, um, the uh, during the year. Yeah, and there was a few bit of paybacks which Yatesy had to get back. Dermot and yep. I probably missed a few other square ups. That yeah, what, what yeah. Lottie wanted to do as well. So. Yeah. Yeah, so eight goals to two, you guys kick in the first quarter, up by 40 points. You kick four goals to five in the second. Then they kick six goals to six goals in the third. So mm. it's just whizzing back and forward. And then they kick eight in the last, yeah. and you hold on yeah. by six points. What did we kick? Like, in the last, yeah. a three-five. Oh, wow, three-five. And they've kicked eight-five. So you've still – you look at you kicked eight goals, four goals, six goals, three goals. Yeah. They've kicked, you know, two, five, six, and eight, and with a lot of behinds for yeah. both of them. Mm. It's just amazing. But I think for anyone 
who's never watched that grand final. Mm. It's an amazing grand final to watch and take out the brutality and everything yeah. like that. But just, yeah, and Ablett's nine, yeah. you know, and I think Doomy kicked. Uh, his his couple, but who else? Um, don't still might have kicked. Don't still kick four. An hour maybe four. Four. Anderson yeah. kick four. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just an amazing game yeah, of football. Was, just to watch it over again, it was. Yeah. You know, like, yeah, it was. It was one game which you always wanted wanted to play in, and uh, yeah. I only played one quarter. But yeah. she's I would have loved to play the other three quarters. Just yeah. the atmosphere and the tense of the game and the way that the ball was rolling yeah. and things like that. So yeah. That was the Hawthorne's seventh grand final in a row. Mm, yeah, that is remarkable. It, it was, yeah, and and that was the the pressure which was probably built on blokes who who came to Hawthorne during yep. those eighty series because they they won eighty three or they played eighty three, yeah. lost eighty four and eighty five to Essendon. Yep, played eighty six, which which I, I was a part of. Yeah, your first and one, then, and then. Um, from there, but anybody who came to Hawthorne during that yeah. time, you were expected to play well, to yep. stay in the in the game, and to to make the finals and win premierships. That was that was the 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 blessing from the footy club. You know, yeah. you, you come to us, and we'll guarantee yep. that you will play finals football and win premierships yep. if you do the right thing by the football club. You were running a pub at that time too, weren't you? Pretty much for your whole time at Hawthorne? Yeah, I, I went to Hawthorne in 86 and I brought the pub in 89. So in yeah. between that two and a half years between there, I yeah, we bought a hotel. And Was that uh, frequented often by Hawks players? Oh, especially the younger blokes. So as the younger blokes come <laughs> through, they, uh, yeah. it was a bit of a, a meeting spot first Yep, because they used to come and get – Free grog off me for, right, until yeah. about eleven o'clock. Prince or so. Alfred's. This was in Carlton. Prince Alfred in Carlton, the yeah. LPAs. Yeah. And so they used to say, "Rat, are you working tonight?" I, yeah. I said, "We're not working, but I'm going there just to see who's there and just yeah. to meet a few people." And I said, "Okay, we're coming. We're going to have a few drinks and we're going to go to the nightclub." So right, it was. It was a little warm up. Thing. It was a warm up, and I always used to put on a free grog for on. You know, yeah, like, yeah. You know, that stays in there was. Uh, yeah, Anderson and Condon and um, a few other yeah, yeah, young, yeah, younger yeah, yeah. Wh- Whitman was another one. Pritchard, yeah. so they yeah. come and drink for free, and then um, it, up going it must clubs. have been a phenomenal time to be around the Hawthorne Football Club. Mm. In in that, their the success is phenomenal. Yeah. yeah, but just like you're saying, the guys, uh, it's just a who's who. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Just to go there and. Uh, in '86, and you, you know, you see Dermot rock up in a Ferrari. You see Dipper rock up in a Mercedes. You know, right. um, Where's you, have you still got your Brock Commodore then? You got uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I had my Brock. Commodore, oh, you still had that, but, but yeah, the and probably, the windows were still going up and down. Oh yeah, they were still going up and down. But uh, it was more about uh, it wasn't so much you know because a Brock Commodore was yeah. was Peter Brock Commodore, which was yeah. a nice car. Yeah. But these bikes are sort of driving, you know, Mercedes and Ferraris yeah. and this type of thing. I said, oh, you, oh, you've only got a hold. And I said, yeah, but it's a Brock Commodore. You know, yes. And, uh, and but right. no, it was, but we, we never sort of really yeah. uh, uh, went on about what we had or what we yeah. did. And blokes never wins about whatever blokes had or got paid because yeah. you knew that you were part of a, a special team. You know? Yeah. These blokes were, were phenomenal. They work hard. On the ground and yeah. work hard off the ground, and we built this relationship with each other. You know, uh, every time that I I see a Hawthorne ex player of mine yeah. in the eighties and nineties, yeah, we don't shake hands; we actually hug each other. Yeah. You know, because yeah. we've got we've got we bonded that we've won premierships, we we've shed tears and blood yeah, and, yeah. and everything else with each other. The Brownlow Medal, you shared it with Big Plugger Locket. Yes. Um, what are your recollections of the night? The, the night was for us, for Hawthorne, because we were playing Carlton in the grand final, in the 87 grand final. So it was a Monday night, so our table had to be sensible and drink water and just, you know, have the right sort of meals as well. So, But the St Kilda table, they were sort of at the back there. They were really loud and because um, <laughs> they weren't playing final, so they, they were out. So when it came to the last last votes, uh, I don't think myself and Tony got any votes in the last round, mm. but then when they announced myself and Tony as the, the joint winners, we had to get up there. So I still had my you know my jacket on and mm. bow tie and, you know, looking pretty smart where poor old Tony was at the back <laughs> there and he was half cut and um, didn't have a jacket on. His bow tie was around, around the side <laughs> of his neck. So he had to get himself all dressed up and he was sweating like a pig. <laughs> And then so we get up on stage and he's giving me this big hug and all, all I felt was all this sweat underneath his arm. So it was uh, it was a bit daunting at the time, but uh, but to this day I you know I I treasure the moments. Do you have a bond with Plugger because of that? 
oh, look, we, we have a bond for sure, but, um, you know, we, we don't sort of ring each mm. other every week or nothing like that. <laughs> you know, the last time I probably spoke to Plugger would have been probably 30 years ago. So, uh, but uh, he, he's got his life and, mm. he's, you know, I've got my life. So he lives in a state yep. and I live here in Adelaide. Yep. So I want to ask you about state of origin as well, mm -hmm. because it's such a, an amazing part and you were an integral part of state of origin with some of the guys you mentioned before. What was it like? playing for South Australia during what is essentially the heyday mm. of State of Origin. How important was that to you? Oh, so important. It was uh, when, when, you, when you start the year, you, 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 you set goals for yourself. And one goal was always to play state footy. Yep. It was always great to wear the, 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 um, the, the jumper. Um, it, you know, even if you're slight injured in the club at Hawthorne said, oh, look, yeah. you know, yeah. You know, you should have a rest, and it was always no. You know, it was always yep. you wanted to get up and play, and and even if you're a slight injured, and you wouldn't do any more damage to yourself the week after, you you, you just wanted to play. The pride yeah, yeah. of coming back to Adelaide, and and the days out at uh, Footy Park, you know, fifty thousand people there on a Tuesday night or yep. Wednesday or Saturday, it was freezing yeah. cold, wet. Um, it was great to see so many people come there and, and cheering for it because at times then when you come back over here to play with, with Hawthorne, you get the yeah. booze and, you know, this sort of stuff. But it was, it yep. was, um, it was always a goal to play state football. And, and I think me and Brad was now the, the most of 15 state of origin games. Yeah. So, um, so it was always on, 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 on our bucket list. How intense did that get? Because obviously some Hawthorne champions, your good oh, yeah. mates, you're yeah. rolling up with yeah. playing in the Vic jumper. Yeah. Was it? Completely no holds barred when you came up against him. Oh, at times yeah, it might have been. I remember a day, and Dipper sell, tells a story quite well. Was that we play the Vicks out of here at uh, Footy Park, and yep. um, and I, I was on the bottom of pack, and all these Victorian blokes started jumping on me, and I see Dipper coming towards me, and going, "Oh my God, Dipper's <laughs> going to get me now." He's come over, and he actually get the, get off the rat, get off. Oh. He's pulling players off. So it was. Oh really? It was it was so. I said, "Thanks, Dipper. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Got to look after you, little rat. You, you little man." So. <laughs> So I can't remember if we won or lost that day, but uh, but it was always a well, know, you, hug and kiss after the game from yeah, him. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Well, you probably gave him the ball a fair bit. He was relying on you. Yeah, he, he was, yeah, Dipper. Yeah, he wasn't scared to go get it either. And, yeah. Uh, you know, and um, we sent it down to Dunstall and uh, he, he yeah. kicked a few goals in his day. So. In the 12 years you had at Hawthorne, the thing I find remarkable, particularly over a lot of the concussions that you talked about, your uh, longevity and your ability to play week after week after week was phenomenal because I think the, the least number of games you ever played in a season was 18. Mm -hmm. You know, you were playing 20s pretty much consistently, so you yeah. hardly missed any footy. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, yeah, it's it's a thing. It's, it's a, uh, yeah, I, I look back and uh, I, I probably did the stats. Uh, overall, in my footy career, I played about 416 games. Yep. You yeah, sort of – find out how many games you play in the year. You might play 22 games mm. or whatever it is. But then you, 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 you divide that 416 into 18 seasons, yep. it's it's 23 games you played. Yeah. This is yeah. practice matches, yeah. practice state, matches of origin, state of origin, night finals. Night finals, all, yeah. uh, all Australian games and things yep. like that. I remember my first year at Hawthorne in 86, yeah. you know, just a kid coming over, I was 22 or something, 23. Yep. I, I counted that I played 37 games. In the season? That year, one season. So 37. all your VFL games? All, all practice the Practice matches? Games. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Night games? Yeah. The whole season? Yeah. All the finals? Yeah. Then we had ex exhibition game uh, with, with Hawthorne? Yeah. And then uh, then we had the uh, the, the Hawthorne versus Subiaco. Oh, yeah. The, the, the week after the grand final. Again, oh, the premiers. Straight, the premiers. Yeah. And then your night games, the night games, had. and then we played. Um, then we did the some exhibition games, and then yeah. I played three games for all Australian. Right. Yeah. For Thirty-seven. Thirty-seven games. Yeah. Geez, imagine the players' association now with the yeah, enterprise no. bargaining. I, 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 what frustrates me so is, is that uh, I cannot believe how blokes, when they say they're getting rested. Yeah. Like, give me a break. Yeah. You, you rest during the week. If you're tired or whatever yeah. it is, have yeah, a rest yeah, during yeah. the week and we'll yeah. play a, yeah. Were well, you playing full-on games on Tuesday nights? No, Tuesday night, yeah, state and, games. And that sort of thing. Yeah, night yeah. games. Yeah. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And play Saturday, play Tuesday night and yep. then play Saturday. <laughs> yeah, it's amazing. <laughs> it's phenomenal. <laughs> um, So you obviously kept playing all the way through that. but So right now, obviously, you know, with the concussion, you're dealing with that. But what about the knees and hips? Now, you, you've had a hip done? A hip done yep. uh, when I was 44. Yeah. And then I just completed two knee replacements over the last uh, eight years. 
So right. one, one was I had one about, one about three years ago and yep. one, one about five years ago. So so you're like the, <laughs> the, the guy in the Terminator. Like, like, you're just all titanium. <laughs> all titanium. Yeah. Um, I go through the hot- the um, uh, airports and yep. all the bells and whistles go off and <laughs> have to get them a gear off. And, uh, yeah. But, like, it, it, it's, it, it's all worth it. Yeah. Right yeah, 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 yeah. How does the body feel? How, you know, with all those – does it make a huge difference? Um, knees and – Oh, it does, yeah, yeah. It does make a better? huge – with the – but getting up and 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 walking and stuff is, is no no pain. Um, yeah. In the mornings, you know, when you first start off, it, it yeah, there's some aches and mm. pains and there's some bit of arthritis and things like that. But uh, but once you get going, um, yeah. I, um, I I'm okay. So once you stop and you sit down yes. for quite a while and you get back up and yeah, you know, a bit of a sore back here and there and a yeah. sore shoulder and uh, yeah. arthritis in the in the fingers and you yeah, know, I haven't done much with a nose lately. So it's uh, not bad. Uh, Oh, it's it's always been big. How many times was that busted? Oh no, eight, nine, ten times. I don't know. <laughs> you breathe all right, and both both nostrils yeah, are I had, okay. Yeah, I had the the polish taken out and had a big clean out. So yeah, all good. it looks yeah. pretty straight. Oh, maybe it's got so been it's, whacked four times that way and four times yeah, the other because it correct. looks yeah, it looks yeah. pretty good. You're, you're being nice to me now. No, you so, are. It yeah. actually it looks very good, Rat. Central District Footy Club. Yep. You obviously went back there and you went back and had a little run. Actually, I reckon, didn't you kick a winning goal in 98? Was, 98. was there a game? Yeah, we played Glenelg in our first you game did. and I came back and kick Gilbert them. came back and That's Gilbert right. came back. And uh, yeah, it was a tight game and yeah. Uh, yeah, we were fortunate enough to yeah kick the last goal over my shoulder. That's in, right. For a goal. So, uh, yeah. It was a nice it was, return. It was a great a turn. Fairy the crowd return. went mental and it was great. It was it was that, but um, you know, things sort of went from there. After about game five or six, I uh, created bone on bone in my yeah. left knee, and yep. and I was taking painkillers for them before the yep. game. And I pretty well know when I when when you cooked in football. Yep. I, we played Westies at uh, at Westies, and uh, and I was having painkillers in my knee to, to get me through the year, and hopefully, you know, play finals, yeah. win a premiership, and that was always the thing which I always wanted to do. But I remember the, the start of the game, I had a painkiller in my knee. Yep. Went okay. At half time, it was really sore again. Came in and had another painkiller. And then uh, in the middle of the ground, I I went to, to twist and turn a bit mm. and I had this this pain going through my knee. It was horrendous. Yeah. It was terrible. And I sort of knew then after having two painkillers and the pain still there, it was it, I was I was looking pretty, pretty pretty doubt that I was going to play the yeah. rest of the seasons. Look, I had operations. I wanted to get back playing, but yeah. unfortunate enough it wasn't. So it was a pretty sad way to finish. Now, Rat, recently you had an event that you obviously were very instrumental in putting together with the Central District Footy Club, which I've got to say I had the privilege to be along there. It was one of the greatest events I've ever been doing a footy club. Yes. You got all of your McGarry medalists together. Yes. All six of you. Very, very special. You know, it was credit to the footy club and the guys that worked with me, uh, some of the, the uh, uh, past players and you, M- MC on the day, everything just went fantastic. It was uh, a great day. A lot of people said that it was the best show ever at the club. So it was to celebrate the six living McGarry medalists, mm. and it was an amazing day. Gary Window, John Duckworth, yourself, Gilbert McAdam, Paul Thomas, and Brad Sines. Yeah. It's a pretty good group of six. Yeah. Now, but this took many years to put together, didn't it? It did. We sort of had this organised probably uh, two and a half years ago. But because of COVID, it stopped everything. But we, we sold the tickets within about three weeks. We had about 300 people there mm-hmm. at, at the footy club at Central's. And uh, and then we had to go back and cancel it for the first time. Then we had to go back and cancel it a second time. And then uh, the third time, we'd, we just about to have some dates and John Duckworth wasn't available. So then we made it, mm. uh, I think it was August uh, of this year, about, mm. uh, about two months ago. But yep. it was great. You know, Gary Window was amazing, 81 year old, and he had the crowd, you know, in his hand. It, it was amazing. It was so funny. You know, Rat, what he was like? He was like an evangelist. You know, he was standing <laughs> on the, the stage with 350 just crazy central supporters and he had them chanting and he was just. Sharp as attack at 81. Oh, he was great and so funny and uh, so passionate. Mm. You know, I, I, I could see how, you know, I wasn't around when, when, when he sort of played the game, but you sort of knew his passion, you know, especially now being 81, uh, mm. his passion about the club and and when he played back in the in the 50s and 60s. And uh, to his credit, he came along and um, he put on a great story. And Ducky from, from, um, from Perth came over. He's an amazing person. He hasn't been back here for a, a good probably 30 or 40 years. So it was great to see, to see him and a lot of our, our people who came on the day uh, couldn't believe 
geez, he's a big unit. Oh, he's just oh. a big, thick, <laughs> powerful beast of a man. He was because he? Yeah, he had a bit of pace about him too, and he was solid. He was mm. a, a, a big fellow who would just run through packs and and get away from blokes because he had that that. Um, explosive power, the first two or three metres, but also he could carry that on for another, you know, 30 or 40 metres as well. So, no, it was good. Brad, it's been a treat. I could sit here and talk to you for ages. I oh, love it. I love hearing it. the stories, mate, and I appreciate you being so open and honest with everything. Yeah. Mate, and wish you all the best with the concussion stuff and with all your testing and all that. And, uh, mate, you look fantastic. Good on you. Stories are brilliant. And I'll tell you what, your memory of all this sort of stuff is still amazing, mate. Oh, and I'm glad you. you can remember Four Flags of Brownlow and Bloody McGarry and everything else you've done. <laughs> Thanks. Right. Okay. Absolute Thank pleasure you. to have you here, mate. Loved it. Thank you. Well, guys, thanks so much for listening. Now, if you love what you just heard, please subscribe to the Soda Room podcast. You could write a review. Uh, you can watch the show on YouTube and share it with your buddies. And if you'd like to get in touch with the show, drop us a line, info at thesodaroom.com. Catch you soon. Soda.